In the 1940s, nearly half a million lions roamed Africa and Asia. Today, fewer than 20,000 remain, squeezed in on all sides by growing human populations. Despite millions of dollars spent on lion conservation in recent decades, their numbers are still declining. There must be a bright idea out there somewhere. Lions are the number one tourist attraction to Kenya, and tourism is one of the top revenue earners. Yet lion numbers have declined from 15,000 just 10 years ago to fewer than 2,000 today. Wherever humans and lions share habitats, conflict leads to lions being killed, and nowhere is this more apparent than in Nairobi. Kenya's capital is one of Africa's fastest growing cities, four million residents and growing at 7% per year. It's the fastest growing city in the world. Nairobi National Park occupies 16% of the city. No other capital city in the world has a park with wild rhinos, lions and other wildlife. The park is fenced along its northern boundary, but is open to the south, linking it to a wider ecosystem and allowing wildlife to make crucial seasonal migrations and that means sharing land with people. This poses a unique challenge for the park and the city residents. Wherever wildlife goes, lions follow. They can even survive in Nairobi's more affluent suburbs, navigating fences in built-up areas. But inevitably, they kill livestock, leading to disastrous consequences. In 2007, so many of the park's lions were killed by the community that they were almost wiped out. The pressure is so great now that we could lose them altogether. We need an affordable solution that empowers people to deal with the problem themselves. Maasai wealth is measured in cattle. From the age of nine, Richard was responsible for managing the family's most valuable assets. By age 11, he'd had enough of lion attacks. If the lions come from the forest and then come to eat our cattle, it's very bad. If I see the lion now, I feel that something uh, is something that is ready to attack me. Me and the lion, we are enemies, enemies, big enemies that we can never be a forg a forgive each another any day. One night, he had a bright idea. This is the belfry, it's being charged by the solar panel. It's there in the roof. And this is the wires that carry the power to the bulbs. And this is the switch where you can switch the lights on and off. Richard's brainchild is one of the first practical solutions to the lion human conflict problem. It's saving cattle, lions, and money. I knew the lions are, were afraid of something which is moving. Because when someone wakes up at night and moves with a torch, the lions are afraid of the lights because they are thinking this person is coming. Since 2009, uh, I started putting our home the bulbs. So we didn't have uh, experience any problem of the lions coming at home until now. So the neighboring homes have even borrowed my dear. Since now, I've put it six homes, the bulbs. As conservationists in Africa, we really need to recognize and support local practical ideas that emerge from young people like Richard. We're proud to have helped Richard to get a scholarship to one of Kenya's top schools, Brookhouse International. All it took was one bright idea. Richard never dreamed that he could be someone that saved lions. Richard Tereri. So, so, um, so, Richard, who, who ever knew you'd end up a, a movie star? I mean, it, was that true? Yeah, it's true. It's mine. <laughs> so, where, where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up uh, at Tengela area, at the ages of. Uh, Nairobi National Park. And at some point you started looking after cattle yourself. How old were you when that happened? Uh, I started looking at my father's cattle when I was nine years old. 
And at night, some nights, what happened? Yeah. What what happened some nights when oh, when you? Well, some nights uh, we we had a very big problem of lions attacking our our kettles at night, uh, and then they eat our uh, kettles. And meanwhile, you had um, this other interest that you were developing. What was that? Mm, now I'm working to the. I want to make an electric shock that I can put to a home for, uh, for security. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Booby trap the home with an electric shock. And to do that, yeah. you, had, you had to learn some electronics, right? How did you do that? Uh, I, I think uh, this knowledge came from God because no one taught me. I didn't have any books. So you just, um, you just started yeah. causing trouble at home, taking <laughs> things apart and figuring out how it worked? Yeah. And then you, you had this idea that you could put this to use to solve the lion problem. How, how did you do that? Uh, I knew that the lions were afraid of something which is moving. <laughs> <laughs> they, they like so, you out there. <laughs> so I, I saw the, I saw, I, I, uh, my mind came up and then I, I knew that the, the motorcycles have the indicators. So I, I got the machine for the indicator and then I used it for Mm, keeping my lions safe and the kettles because now I'm saving lions and kettles. <laughs> so, so that was the beat I didn't get from the film because so there was a motorcycle indicator switch in there and that's what causes the, the light to move yeah, from one light to the other? It's the one which makes the lights to splash. So splash you, all the side. So you're a smart kid. So you've got this, so you've got this scholarship and you've already started yeah, school? Yeah, when I invented this thing, uh, the... Uh, the head teacher for Brookers was very excited for my invention, so he gave me the scholarship to Brookers. It's the best school, one of the best schools in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you started there like two, two weeks ago, and, and um, what are you going to do with all this education and knowledge? What's your dream? Uh, I want to be, uh, because now I'm in a good school, I want to be an aircraft engineer. So this is a, so you grew up in the fields, looking after cattle, under the flight path, seeing all these planes go by. And little sparks were going off in your mind. And those sparks now mean that you can realize your dream of those helping build the airplanes of the future. How amazing is that? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing because when I was at home, I used to see the planes coming to go and land. So I just feel that one day I'll be in the plane. Richard Terreri, you are amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey.